This is a Socialist News and Views special interview. I'm Nick Schillingford coming to you from the Urban Cabin Studios in South Minneapolis with this special interview. So on Socialist News and Views, we let folks introduce themselves. Do you want to just tell listeners who you are? Mm -hmm. Um, First, I just wanted to ask the audience um, to think about some things while you're listening. Um, How many of you think that babies should be born into the world as healthy as possible? Um, Do you think that's a right? Um, I know that there are a lot of issues, factors that can influence that, but that's just something I want you to think about. Um, while you're listening. My name is Kelly Lundeen. I work with an organization called Nuke Watch. Um, I've been there for nine years. I previously did accompaniment with International Peace Observatory in Colombia. I lived there for a while. I also had um, worked with Catholic Worker Movement, and now I'm here at Nuke Watch. Um, Nuke Watch is an organization that's been around since 1979. We're a nuclear watchdog, environmental justice group dedicated to the abolition of nuclear weapons, nuclear energy, radioactive waste militarism. We bring critical attention to the locations, dangers, transport, and politics of nuclear weapons, reactors, and the waste. We advocate uh, resistance and intersectional solidarity in the spirit of the civil rights movement, to help create a world free of war and oppression. We have a long history of successful, um, especially nationwide campaigns. We uh, organized during the Cold War, starting um, with the buildup of nuclear weapons arms race in the Cold War and the secrecy around that nuclear industry. And we conducted track watch to monitor and expose train shipments that were secret shipments um, of radioactive waste going around the country. And then we also did truck watch, which was um, monitoring and following transportation of H-bombs and parts in unmarked trucks by the Department of Energy. Um, And then in the the 80s, we also mapped the 1,000 missile silo sites across the Great Plains and turned that into a book. Um, More in this area, uh, we're based in uh, Anishinaabe, Ojibwe land, northwestern Wisconsin, a couple hours from the Twin Cities, just east. Um, over here, we had a project, Project Elf, um, where we would uh, organize a few protests every year. There'd be a few, we had over a 500 people arrested at a naval base where um, first launch, first strike launch commands could go out to submarines. Um, so that they would lodge a nuclear weapon. Um, recently, we've been involved in solidarity campaigns with, um, in Germany, the United States has nuclear weapons on German bases right. that would be used by German uh, German bombers in, in the case um, under NATO, um, a NATO agreement, although it is a um, violation of the non-proliferation treaty. Um, and so we've been working with with the German campaign and solidarity to get those nuclear weapons brought back from Germany because they don't, you know, most Germans don't want them there. They know that right. that's a danger to themselves. Absolutely. Um, and Nukwatch is also a member of the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, um, which that organization won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017 after ushering in um, United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. So it was a international nuclear weapons ban. Um, so, yeah, that's my introduction. Yeah, I... Uh... I appreciate that. Yeah, y'all have done a lot of stuff and you know some of that stuff I didn't even know about. So interesting to hear about the the whole history, what's been going on and and the hope that uh, some other people can find out about the important work that y'all are doing. Um, I was just, you know, I usually pick up a copy of the the quarterly uh, that y'all put out, um, the newsletter. And in the most recent one, I think it was the most recent one, <clears throat> was an article titled, Is Leaked Radioactive Tritium in Mississippi River Drinking Water? 
And it said an Associated Press article quoted the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, quote, there is no pathway for the tritium to get into drinking water, end quote. Uh, but NukeWatch has said this is inaccurate. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the background of this situation with the leak? And then, you know, again, it hasn't been getting much coverage. Just discuss how this radioactive substance tritium can get into our environment and into ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so in November of 2022, at the Monticello Nuclear Generating Plant in Monticello, 35 miles northwest of the Twin Cities area, um, there was a leak of, well, it wasn't actually, it wasn't, uh, there was no alert to the public for four mm -hmm. months. So no one actually even knew about it. Um, originally, they said, they said that um, there were 400,000 gallons when Excel Energy and the regulatory um, and state agencies finally did um, alert the public. It was four months later, and they said it was 400,000 gallons of primary coolant. They didn't say it was primary coolant. They said that it was um, it had tritium in it. And um, so you could just see from the beginning of this story that there's a major lack of transparency about what's right. going on. Um, and that was, you know, the complicity between the company Excel Energy and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, that's the federal agency in charge of mo supposedly monitoring um, nuclear right. power across the country. And, um, and other state agencies were also involved and they did not come out publicly with this information. Um, a year or so after the leak, um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which I'm gonna call NRC, um, asked Excel for more information about the leak. And finally, Excel admitted it was actually twice that amount. Mm. So it was over 800,000 gallons of the radioactive tritium. Um, and so it's been kind of one thing after another that we keep finding out more and more things um, about, about the danger of the leak and just more information. And so NukeWatch has been asking the NRC and Excel questions and we don't always get answers, uh, but every once in a while uh, we've been able to find a few answers about what's going on. One of them, one of the other things we found out, um, they've, uh, Montes the Monticello reactor has been running for 53 years already, which is already long past it's due um, what it was designed for. It was right. designed for 40 years, like all nuclear reactors in the United States. And they have a, um, so after the 40 years, they have to ask for a new permit through the NRC. So they got that in 2006, and now they're asking for another one, which um, is likely to be granted. Unfortunately, the NRC um, will very soon be having its um, charter changed, its purpose to not just be a regulatory agency, but a promoter of nuclear energy. Um, and the it has rubber stamped 86 out of 92 licenses. And so we're expecting this one to be um, rubber right. stamped also, despite the recent leak and other aging issues that are a huge um, danger to human right. health, the environment's health, uh, Mother Earth, and so we have been investigating, looking through all the, this paperwork uh, and um, that they have had to issue in relation to this license renewal. Um, they're asking to run it from 60 years until it's 80 years old. So you can imagine like a car. Um, right. Can you imagine running a car for 80 years? <laughs> Double um, its life. Right. It's, uh, and they're obviously with age-related issues, they're much more likely to have more accidents like this. And Monticello has already had several accidents, although this one's been the most serious, this recent one. So tritium, um, like you said, it's a radioactive substance um, that is created in, um, it's created in the nuclear fuel chain really um, in different, in diff not just in at reactor sites, um, there is a very, very small amount of naturally occurring tritium. 
um, it's created in the upper atmosphere. So there's a very small minute amount that would reach the earth um, naturally. And then there's what they call background, mm. a level, which is not this natural. But the industry a lot of times says, oh, it's naturally occurring. So therefore it must be safe. Well, there's a small amount of naturally occurring tritium and the rest of it has been created since the first uh, nuclear test bomb and the whole industry took off in the 1940s. So the background radiation is human made. Right. Um, <clears throat> tritium has a very short um, half-life. And so people say, oh, it's safe because it's going to break down in just a hundred years, no problem. And um, part of the problem about it is actually we don't, there's a lot of things that are not known because it is, uh, it, the United States has refused to do any studies since the 1980s. And that's just very outdated information. Um, the United States uh, uh, National Institutes of Health did issue a study in 2015 around reactor sites around nuclear reactors and they ran it for a few years and then they said, oh, it's too expensive. And they didn't quite admit that they just don't want that information getting out. If they would collect the data, they don't want that information getting out. But there have been um, a compilation of significantly or uh, statistically significant studies, uh, mostly in Europe around reactor sites, um, looking at the damage that can be done, uh, at least to human health. And uh, what they've found is that um, children are much more likely to be born with cancer if you're living around a nuclear reactor. They're also uh, much more likely to develop childhood leukemia. So that's just the effects on children. And the, um, the way that radiation exposure is looked at um, in the United States for the risk to somebody is they look at an uh, adult male. They haven't, they don't look at um, women or children specifically. And because of the size of their body uh, as children, they're much more um, susceptible to have a much higher risk. Right. And it's not just the tritium. There are a lot of other radioactive uh, substances released at, um, reactors. So I do want to differentiate. We we're talking originally about the leak that happened a year and a half ago. However, all of these, um, these health risks are, they occur at through regular operation mm -hmm. of a nuclear reactor. So the, the accident will only increase those kinds of risks. So tritium is dangerous. Um, especially dangerous because it uh, is the radioactive form of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a building block of life. Mm -hmm. So um, when tritium gets into water, into groundwater or uh, surface water, it can exchange atoms with the hydrogen. So if you think of water, it's H2O, two hydrogen atoms and one um, oxygen one of the hydrogen atoms can be replaced with tritium. So now you have radioactive water. Mm -hmm. When water gets into an animal's body, when it gets into the water cycle, when it gets into a human body, the body doesn't differentiate. And so we take it in, it crosses the placenta, it um, and causes a lot of damage. It causes cancer, obviously. Um, so it is dangerous no matter what um, Generation Atomic will tell you or any of these other AstroTurf groups that are out parading as mm -hmm. if they um, are they're promoting nuclear power as the solution to climate change. And they have a lot of, of propaganda and PR. They will tell you about radioactive substances, try to convince you it's safe, or even sometimes they tell you it's good for you. Yeah. And, um, and it's not, it's, it's very dangerous. And, uh, and of course, you know, we can look at what, what it does to human health, but the damage it's doing to, to the planet and what will happen to the planet in hundreds, thousands, millions of years 
um, there's nothing we can do about that. There's no way we can control this. It's a, we're using radioactive, we're creating radioactive waste so that we can turn on our lights. So great. I got my right. lights turned on today. And in a million years, if there are any humans left, they're going to be dealing with that radioactive waste because it's still d dangerous after a million years. It's and still so highly radioactive. Right. And I was just going to say, so just touching on the tritium quick, and then I wanted to yeah talk more about the general operation and some things uh, that I was considering. But yeah, they've they claimed that it didn't get into the river or whatever. But of course, this is go you know quite possibly did because of, they have not been transparent this whole time. And a lot of the things they've said have not been true. So you can't take everything they say as true. And then also you've got groundwater, you've got getting into animals, the air, et cetera. So you've got all these different ways um, that this could get into uh, the environment. And then of course, from the environment can get into then into human cells, as you mentioned, and ch into children. Um, going back, as far as the general operation of, uh, 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 nuclear uh, power, nuclear reactors, nuclear facilities. Um, one thing that was really coming to mind a while back was thinking about climate change, about sea level rise. Um, and then even since I was thinking that, we've had all this flooding in uh, 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 Minnesota too. So instead of the reactor going to the water, you know, or whatever, or the, or the toxic uh, waste going to the uh, water, going to the reactor or, or going to the, uh, the river, you've got the river coming to potentially, or the sea coming to the um, uh, the uh, facility. And specifically, I saw a recent study from the Union of Concerned Scientists, UCS, almost 1,100 critical infrastructure assets that sustain coastal communities will be risk, uh, be at risk of monthly flooding by 2050. Um, so I would assume that, you know, the ongoing flooding from climate change, both at the sea level and at the, you know, the level around other places is going to be, have a big impact on, uh, you know, the ability of this nuclear material to get into water supplies, into groundwater, into surface water, et cetera. Is that something you guys are thinking about, talking about? Yeah. Finding out about? Um, yeah. So I'm going to go back to um, your very um, first part of that. So yeah. actually, one of the other things we did undercover, <laughs> un uncover yeah. is that um, – <laughs> in the um, paper and on all the documentation for relicensure for this reactor, mm -hmm. um, we did find that, um, and this was after the newsletter that you saw, we did confirm that uh, originally it says um, tritium, the tritium uh, tainted water did it likely discharge to the river. So we brought mm -hmm. that up at one of the meetings. And at a following meeting with the NRC, they actually apologized to us. They said, as you have read our documentation, uh, you have found that mm -hmm. it likely reached the river and we apologize for this communication. Um, um, so basically they were saying for, yeah, after a year and a half of denying that it had gotten into the river, they admitted it. And that mm -hmm. was just, um, that was just about six weeks ago that that came out, that it was confirmed by the NRC and Excel that it did reach the river, which means the drinking water for almost 4 million people in the Twin Cities area and maybe 15 million downstream. Right. Mississippi River is a major source of drinking water in the United States. Um, so related to climate change, there are some very serious problems with nuclear. Mm -hmm. um, so all, all of the things that you said, sea level rise, rivers coming up flooding are all dangers for nuclear reactors because reactors rely on water to keep cool. Um, also, um, it's not carbon free as, as mm. people claim. They, they right. say it's carbon free, so we need it right now. But um, in the entire process of creating this kind of fuel, the, you're, you're, you need carbon to, or you need energy to to create it. And then also a nuclear reactor has to be continually cooled 24 hours a day, or it will melt down. So right. um, that's what happened in Fukushima. The, right, we saw um, that, yeah. the regular um, cooling system failed. And then the backup generators also failed. Um, and so in Fukushima, there was a tsunami um, earthquake or an earthquake and the tsunami that knocked out the power and led to 
three explosions and the meltdowns um, at the reactors. And um, so those things as climate change is increasing are even a bigger danger because of the severe weather, because of wildfires, flooding, um, out we have tornadoes around here. And then in other areas, there are other things to worry about hurricanes and other things that can knock out power. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing about being close to a water body for a nuclear reactor is the fact that since it requires the water to be cool, it has to be cool when it comes into the reactor um, so that it can cool the reactor and then go back to its environment it goes back to the environment warmer. If the water, yeah, water is warming up the, like right. the rest of the earth. So mm -hmm. in the last six years or so, there have been several reactors that have had to shut down because the water is not cold enough to cool the reactor. Mm -hmm. in, um, there are several in France, a few others in Europe. And um, so it's in a warming earth, nuclear can't survive. Right. Um, even with the um, the other things that now the federal government has um, really gotten on board with the nuclear industry that has been promoting um, not only license extensions for old from so the older reactors, but starting these new they call them small modular reactors. Right. And they they're gonna have all the same problems, even though they claim that they're gonna be safer and cleaner, and they aren't. In fact, the radioactive waste they create per amount of electricity created um, is two to 32 times more, um, the, a larger amount of radioactive waste. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, they're probably going to have more problems. I can only imagine, you know, now that yeah. it's now and they're smaller and they're trying to, you know, they've got this great new idea. Well, yeah, the, 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 the warming water was not something I was even thinking about. So that's another good that's another good point that, yeah, they're having, they're going to have trouble cooling these, uh, these reactors because they planned on, you know, uh, they probably, you know, crunched some numbers and they've planned on water being a certain temperature. And now we've got water that's significantly warmer. I mean, the oceans are like off the charts uh, in some areas uh, by current measures, as far as um, global warming is concerned, like down around Florida, what was that last year or the year before they were like, what are they saying? Like, hot tub temperatures or something like that. And, you know, we've had this red algae coming in all that that's making people cough and choke all this stuff, you know, related to this warming water. And this is just another um, piece of that, but yeah. So getting back to, um, you know, the Midwest uh, I know you mentioned it and obviously people should get involved with uh, nuke watch and, and support you guys. What, what kinds of things are you telling people, um, you know, that they can do if they're really concerned about these issues of, radioactive contamination in their communities? How can they get involved? How can they um, try to make some changes so that they uh, can get some of these things out of their communities or, or improve their communities, make things safer? Well, um, I'll give you um, something specific that people in the states, at least right now, of Minnesota, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota, and Michigan can do. Mm -hmm. um, the Monticello nuclear reactor is part of a plan of Excel's plan for providing energy um, to these states. And right now people can get involved and make comments through August 9th uh, about um, asking for this reactor to be retired at the age that it currently is planned, which was 2030. So that would just be six more years. Um, and that would mean rejecting the additional licensure of 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you can ask for that to happen and you can um, find out how to do that at our website, which is nukewatchinfo.org slash Monticello. Um, should I spell that or? You might as well, yeah. <laughs> okay, N-U-K-E-W-A-T-C-H-I-N-F-O dot O-R-G slash Monticello, M O N. T I C E L L O. So that's Good. where you can find out how to um, make those comments. Um, all of these, those states I listed are in the upper Midwest Excel um, service area. So that's why um, your comments can go, even though if you don't live in Minnesota, um, you could still make comments to the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission, which 
has to give this approval for the Monticello reactor to continue going. Um, and there are a lot of other things you can comment on in that, in Excel's plan. Um, so. Yeah, Monticello um, was the, especially the word I was thinking of spelling because every time I've looked it up, I I think I've spelled it wrong when I was looking at the, <laughs> yeah. the power plant. So it's, it's not the easiest, at least for me to spell. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then generally, um, well, on our website, obviously, there's a lot to read and learn about mm -hmm. Monticello, it, specifically in um, all of the other issues, nuclear issues generally. Um, right. So other things are just keep in mind when you hear about new plans for wa radioactive waste storage, um, Right now, there's no safe way to store it, and there's no safe place, and there's no one who has ever willingly, with free, prior, and informed consent, um, said, yes, we want your radioactive waste. Mm -hmm. um, often those communities are, t t t um, it's marginalized communities, poor, um, uh, uh, usually indigenous communities are the ones targeted for those proposals. So, um, so far, there's never been a good proposal. Um, and there's another thing that they've uh, talked about that the industry has talked about lately that they're trying to push and you should oppose is um, they're calling consent based siting. But mm. right now, they're giving money out to a bunch of different communities across the United States to say, hey, uh, wouldn't you like to have this radioactive waste in your backyard? And um, Right now, there isn't, there aren't any current proposals. Recently, a few got shut down, which is a big victory, and those were called consolidated interim storage. They're called CIS, um, in New Mexico and Texas. So that was a a victory for our side, um, currently, um, but those can come up again uh, because right. this industry has been producing waste for seventy years, and there's nowhere to put it. The right. industry is not insured. Um, okay, so oppose radioactive waste sites, oppose any nu new nuclear, um, wherever you are at in the United States, um, new nuclear reactors and yeah, so. And if folks find out about stuff that's, that's going on in their backyard and, you know, they don't know if that, that's something they could reach out and let you guys know about too, right? That there's Definitely. something that they're hearing about or seeing that's, uh. Uh, that's happening or they're being asked to store some waste or something that's making them concerned. <laughs> yeah, That's something they yep. can reach out to Nukewatch about. Yeah. Yep. You can call us and ask questions. A lot of times we usually, usually we know about all of the proposals and right. so we're able to um, educate people about, you know, what are the risks? Do you guys get a lot of calls, people trying to find out what's going on? Not a lot. Okay. Well, we're, we're, yeah, well, well, that's uh, it, it, it would be good if people uh, started uh, having, knowing that they have somewhere they can call to find out what's uh, going on. Cause I'm sure when they, uh, you know, when they hear about it, like you said, it's not something they're super uh, upbeat about something that they're excited to have in their, uh, in their backyard. So it would be good if they had somewhere that they could uh, reach out to. Well, I, I really thank you for uh, speaking with me. Uh, I think this is super important, not just the Monticello power plant, but discussing and educating people about uh, the many, many issues with, the idea of nuclear energy. Is there anything else that you want to share before you go, Kelly? Actually, I did just think I just did just remember something else. Yeah. Go. Um, okay. Um, another piece of news that we discovered in the documentation Excel has provided to the NRC um, <laughs> was kind of funny. We were here in the office uh, in May looking through these hundreds of pages and looking at the charts of how much radioactive um, substance had been read at different monitoring wells. And so we were looking at the ones closest to the Mississippi River, of course. And um, this information has never come out in public. We sent out press releases after we found out, but um, um, we've, we learned by looking at the charts, July 27th, 2023, the monitoring well closest to the river started reading levels of tritium Three weeks later, it had increased fivefold. Wow. And then they cut off the monitoring and they yep. stopped accepting data 
um, for the information they're collecting for the um, license renewal. And so <laughs> it was quite a shock to read that and, um, you know, say, hey, the, um, the radioactive levels, the day they cut it off, were, it was the day after it had reached the EPA's drinking water safe level levels. And that was when they cut it off. So. Well, yeah, the level of um, corruption and uh, concealment from the public and stuff is sometimes like so terrible that it's like, yeah, it's like, well, I was just listening to a podcast. And it's like that gallows humor or whatever of like, you just can't even like believe it, but you've seen it so much before that you're like, of course they would cut it. Of course they would exactly. cut off the, uh, the, the thing as soon as it reaches the limit and not tell us any more information about what's going on. Uh, yeah. We've seen it so many times before, but it, you're still somehow a little bit surprised in a way that like, not even not even so much that they would do it, but that nobody's talking about it, or that that's not becoming a bigger story or that it's not, you know, like uh, getting the attention of, of folks. And it's really unfortunate. So I hope that, uh, you know, this can get uh, some of that attention on it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say the Monticello Times, I have to give them a kudos because they've oh. they've covered they haven't covered that part yet, but they have said they will be. And um, they've been honest whenever they get information, they publish it. So, um, you know, it's an, a local paper in Monticello. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, your time and for everyone for listening. And that's our special interview. Thanks for listening. Solidarity. This has been a Socialist News and Views special interview.